Welcome to a statistics video. This time we are looking at frequency distribution tables, how to fill those in or construct those, and with a particular focus on individual data. Let's have a look. A question might ask us to arrange the following data into, into a frequency distribution table. We've got a whole bunch of numbers there. Let's see how we can turn them into a frequency distribution table. Now a frequency distribution table uh, can have a score column and uh, a tally column to help us uh, figure out and uh, help us to count and a frequency column. Now the frequency column tells us how many times each score occurs but uh, let's have a look how we might do this if we're asked to do this in a test. Okay so we put the scores down we look for the lowest score amongst them and that's a 2 and we look at the highest score which is a 7 and we'll put all the scores listed down there. Now one at a time we get into a bit of a rhythm here and I'll, I'll show you how we do this. We cross off the score and then we put a mark down in the tally column and then we'll uh, add up those tally marks to give us a final frequency number in the end. Let's have a look. So we'll cross out for that 5 and put a mark down on the 5 in the tally column. We'll cross off the 3, put a mark down in the tally column for the 3. We'll cross off the 4. We'll just keep going with that. Cross off the 5 again. I'll show you what happens when we keep doing that. We'll cross off the 7, cross off the 2, put a tally mark next to the 2, the 3, the 6, the 3, the 5, the 3 again, the 2, 7 gets again, the 6, Four. Now we're just about to do, oh wait, I'll just put the 4 down. When we cross off this next 3 I'll show you what we do on the tally column here because we've got 4 markings so far on the tally column and what we do is we cross off the 3 and just to keep count of how many markings we've put so we don't get lost there we put a cross uh, like a diagonal you can see there uh, every time we make 5 tally marks. So it helps us add up the tallies later on. So we'll cross off the 5 and another five and you can see again we've created five tally marks there and put a little diagonal cross through them. Six, two, three. So if we do this carefully enough we shouldn't miss any uh, numbers but we'll have a double check in a moment. Okay we're done. Put all the tally marks in and what we'll do is for each of these scores here we'll check the tallies and we'll put that into a proper number for how many times each of those numbers occur. This really says that two occurred three times, four occurred twice, etc. But we'll just fill in the tally the frequency column from the tallies this time. So there's three markings for the two, so there's a three uh, to indicate that uh, the score of two occurred three times. There are seven uh, threes, there are two fours, there's six tally marks there for five, there's five tally marks there for six, and two tally marks for seven. So that's our uh, completed frequency distribution table. But we should just double check our work here. We don't want to miss any scores or put any extra ones in. Probably more likely to miss scores if you're going to make an error. Let's double check. Now a double check we can do is to count the number of scores and sometimes the question says arrange the following 25 scores into uh, a frequency distribution table. But if we count that carefully we'll, uh, we have 25 scores that we've just crossed off. And uh, as a double check we should add up the frequency column and make sure we do have 25 scores accounted for there and in this case uh, 7 plus 3 is 10 plus 2 is 12, 18, 23, 25 scores in the frequency columns so that adds up nicely so we can be confident we've processed all the numbers quite nicely there. So we've got scores and now we have a column uh, indicating how many times each of those scores occurred so that's officially a frequency distribution table when we have individual data. Alright, well done. See you next time. PeterBlakeMath.com